So uh, today we're going to be talking about how technology can improve the parent, teacher, student relationship. Now, this is a subject that I've spoken to many different teachers about and hearing all of the opinions and ideas of them has have been really, really interesting. And it's a subject that teachers find quite challenging sometimes. So um, it's going to be great to hear some uh, advice and perspectives on how to bridge that gap between the teacher, the student, and the parent, and really get the most out of your teaching. Uh, so it's an honor and a privilege to hear from three incredible educators today. Uh, we've got Randall, we've got Brandy, and we also have Mariah as well. Um, so before we jump into like the panel discussion type thing, um, I wanna introduce our guests individually, and it would be great to hear all of your initial thoughts on the topic. So let's start with uh, Mariah. So, uh, hey, Mariah, uh, you're the principal at Cedar Crest Middle School in Pennsylvania, the winner of the 2018 NASSP Digital Principal Award, and of course, one of our very first uh, Wakelet ambassadors. Um, I'd just like to hear a little bit about yourself and then also your thoughts, your initial thoughts on the topic that we're speaking about. Hi, everybody. I'm so excited to be here with you today. Um, what an awesome opportunity to share and grow together um, and, and just experience um, a way to make um, education great for our students. So, um, so I'm honored to um, participate and really excited to be here with you today. Um, so my name is Mariah Rackley. I'm the principal at Cedar Crest Middle School in Lebanon, Pennsylvania. So um, if you're close by for some perspective, I'm about 10 miles outside of Hershey, Pennsylvania, um, just to give you an idea of where we are. Um, I've been the principal here at the middle school for, I just finished my 10th year, um, so starting year 11 very soon. We're super excited about that. Um, I have a really unique um, perspective probably because I've um, worked at Cedar Crest Middle School my entire career. I taught here, I was an assistant principal and now the building principal here as well. So let me tell you a little bit about our Wakelet story. Um, we started using um, social media about two years ago, really making a big push to tell the story of our school. Um, because we just felt it was so important for us to be able to tell our story because we know that if we aren't the ones telling our story, someone else is going to tell it for us. And so we really wanted to be able to share the great things that are happening in our school. And I know as educators, you all know that there are awesome things happening in your school every single day. And all you want to do is be able to tell people about those great things. And so we really tried to take control of that through social media. Um, and we started um, tweeting and posting pictures on Instagram and, and using Facebook and other options um, as a way to really, um, to really tell our school's story. And um, about um, 18 months ago, I found Wakelet. And Wakelet um, provided this amazing tool for us as a school um, because one of the things that we heard in terms of feedback from parents and even our staff members were, well, I'm not on Twitter or I'm not on Instagram or I'm only on Facebook. And all of a sudden, we kind of stumbled, I stumbled across Wakelet. I mean, we started using it as this awesome way to connect with people so they could find everything in one space. They could find, um, they could find um, links to our Twitter accounts. They could find posts. They could find our Facebook accounts. They could find everything in one place um, through one common customized Wakelet link. And so it's been just an awesome tool for us to be able to push out our story in one place so we didn't have to have parents on Twitter and we didn't have to have parents on Facebook and they didn't have to be on Instagram. They didn't have to cover every platform. Wakelet allowed us to do that for them. So every Friday before I leave, um, every Friday before I leave for the weekend, um, I create a new collection and send out to our um, to our community through our social media accounts, um, but I, that allows me to meet teachers and parents and families where they are and, and connect with them that way so that um, they have an opportunity to really engage with us. So just, I wanna share just one other way that I've really, really, really enjoyed Wakelet, um, and that's the new collaboration feature. Um, so we've used the collaboration feature in lots of different ways. So we have um, a couple teachers in our school who have used it incredibly well with their students, allowing everyone to collaborate and connect their ideas in one space. And that's been um, just a really powerful learning tool to allow students to collaborate, to post their documents, to post feedback to each other, to connect with the content and the curriculum in a way that's new and different. Um, and it's really been, um, it's really been powerful um, to do that. Um, the other thing that we've done is that um, I've used um, Wakelet as a presentation tool. So I think um, using the collaboration feature and sharing 
um, sharing some of the um, sharing the QR code or sharing a link to a collection allows you to receive feedback it allows you to hear what um, your audience is thinking it allows you in real time um, to be able to connect with people and also to collaborate so then that link becomes almost a resource or um, or a, a nice reference uh, page from whatever um, you could do so that would be awesome so I see I see some people in the chat asking me if I would um, share um, a sample of a collection so I'll be happy to do that um, in the chat I'll, I'll stick my um, a link to my page in the chat and then um, you can follow that it'll take you to all of our collections and um, they're posted by week so you'll be able to sort through them really easily um, so I'd be happy to do that for you Christina that's not a problem at all um, but that's that's basically our weekly journey thank you so much for that Mariah and I have to say that um, you were one of the first educators um, on Wakelet to start using the platform for those newsletters and um, the effect that that had in terms of influencing other teachers to start telling the school story in that particular way was, was really, really huge. So a true innovator. Um, so um, we're going to move on a little bit now and um, uh, introduce Randall. So um, I'm sure many of you know Randall, um, the author of the book, uh, Welcome to the Grind, uh, the book that helps teachers improve their skills in the classroom, uh, founder of Personalized PD. Uh, it's a company that helps educators get the most out of their professional development. And we've known Randall Sampson here at Wakelet for years. He was one of the first true Wakelet ambassadors. He's been along for the ride for such a long time, riding the Wakelet wave since day one, we might say. Um, so Randall, a little bit about yourself and um, uh, a little bit about your, your thoughts on the subject. Okay, yeah. Uh, hey guys, nice to see everybody. Uh, glad that everybody made it in today. Uh, I know it's summertime, so uh, at least in, in our part of the hemisphere, it's summertime. Uh, so teachers in, in the States are, are having their, their intercessions or their breaks. Uh, so they're having time with family and we appreciate people taking time out to do that. Um, so my background is, is, is fairly uh, the same as everybody else in education. Uh, so I started out teaching and uh, went into administration. And when I was in administration, I think one of the cool things uh, that you try to do is to streamline the process for teachers um, and not make things as clunky. Uh, so that's where technology kind of comes in and uh, using technology to really amplify the learning processes uh, for students and to uh, use the data to identify what's working, what's not working. Um, and then to really use data in a different way. So uh, that way we're not stuck just looking at spreadsheets and numbers because the kids are bigger than just numbers and spreadsheets. Um, so it's this unique uh, stories that, that kids have, uh, that teachers have, and these experiences. Uh, that we all know happen inside of school. So the technology is kind of helping us uh, to capture those moments and capture those experiences. And uh, and with that, uh, I went on a visit to Harvard um, for the Achievement Gap Initiative and came back and all excited. So we used technology to amplify uh, the experiences for kids and saw a 600% increase of African-American kids in AP classes, 35% uh, increase of scores for all kids moving from threes to fours on the AP test. Um, so that was huge. Uh, so those are the kind of gains that we want to look at to figure out what kind of technologies can help that um, uh, process for schools and for teachers. Uh, so uh, then I went into creating my own company. Uh, so uh, the fun part about it is uh, I don't necessarily just work with central office. Uh, so the work is actually done inside of the school building with the principal, with the teachers, with the students. And that's where the concentrated effort is. And so introducing uh, cool tools like Wakelet and, and other tools uh, as to uh, a method to kind of streamline processes because uh, we all know teachers and principals have enough to do and schools are busy as they are. So adding another layer of technology to, to create a vacuum is not a, it's not a good thing. Um, so with that said, um, basically what I wanna do is I wanna use uh, technology as a, um, as an authentic uh, data capturing tool. Um, so what are these authentic stories that are out there happening, like Mariah says, and they're building, there are these great things happening. Um, so the ability to put them into a neat story, um, which is actually data, storytelling is data. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just a, a humanistic experience, right? Mm -hmm. And so with that, we also want to create uh, some level of clarity for parents, some clarity for teachers, uh, what is expected and the data creates a nice picture about what we're doing, how we're doing it, and uh, what are the next steps and what's expected. And it allows kids to connect the dots. 
Um, we want kids to connect the dots as they see it. Every kid, every teacher is different how they learn. Uh, so using different technologies to do that. And then the last part that, that I think about um, is using data and using technology as, as a culture builder. So how do we create this awesome, awesome culture um, that we have in our buildings and not have a tool or multiple tools to tell stories about mm -hmm. our culture so it can pass on and continue to get um, uh, better in our culture and create these exponential results that we all seek. Mm -hmm. um, and with that, you have this whole self-directed culture that gets gets started through the use of technology. And uh, something like uh, Wakelet definitely does that for us. And trying to scale that um, is fairly easy because sometimes when you have one expert that knows how to do it and then they move to a different school, then it kind of stops. Mm -hmm. Uh, Wakelet really does a great job with allowing people to to scale. Mm -hmm. And and I think when it comes to teacher 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 communication, you're really awesome at that, Rundal. Um, you know, making connections, bringing people uh, together, sharing those ideas, and just facilitating those introductions. Even it's a it's an incredible skill to have. I think um, it's a pleasure to have you with us, of course. Um, Next, we're going to move on to Brandy. So, Brandy, um, I know that we lost you a little bit there just for some technical issues, but you jumped in at the exact perfect time. So thank you so much for that. Um, so Brandy, uh, you're a kindergarten teacher at Wilson Preparatory Academy, uh, an award-winning educator. And of course you have the elite status uh, as being one of the very first educators to introduce Wakelet into their school. So um, we'd love to hear a little bit about yourself and uh, some of the ideas that you have when it comes to bridging that gap between the parent, the teacher uh, and the student. Hi guys, um, my name is Brandy Reams. I am from Wilson, North Carolina. Um, I live in Rocky Mount, but my heart is in Wilson where I teach. Um, I spend most of my time there. So I started using Wakelet about 18 months ago as well. And what I was finding was there was this huge disconnect between what was happening at school and relaying that information to parents. And I needed a simpler way to try to get that information out there. You know, the old school way, we're printing out newsletters, sending them home, and parents are crumpling them up and throwing them away, or they just get lost in the kid's book bag. Um, so I wanted to make sure that we had a way that was stagnant for parents to be able to access this information at their fingertips at any given time. Mm -hmm. um, we even tried sending newsletters through emails and I would still get emails back from parents saying, hey, I lost the email, could you resend it? So now we have one link and that can be accessed by parents at any given time. We always recommend that they create an account to follow us since it's free and then they get up to date um, notifications whenever we create some kind of new information to put out there. So in kindergarten and kindergarten through second grade, we mainly use it for newsletters and communicating events and things like that to parents. But these newsletters that we're creating are kind of active. So now parents have these resources and things that we need them to have at their fingertips. And so that's kind of where I come in and I'm kind of helping my crew to, um, kind of expand on this so that we can broaden our parent relationship, which is gonna ultimately build and strengthen our community mm -hmm. um, and our culture. And so that is exactly what we're looking for. So I'm looking forward to many more really fun and exciting years with Wakelet and this whole team. Oh, that's amazing to hear. Thank you so much, Brandy. And whenever I'm introducing Wakelet to somebody who doesn't know about Wakelet, um, one of the main go-to pro profiles that I go to is yours because it is incredible. Um, I think that the best thing about it is that you've managed to really organize things in a, in, in a visual, uh, cohesive way that helps people understand exactly what they're looking at. And again, just using that mixed media, being able to take any mm -hmm. type of content. I know that you make YouTube video playlists for um, for the parents of teachers. I'm sure you'll jump into that later, but um, there's, there's some really incredible things on your profile. So um, I would suggest... I'm sure that people are gonna start asking, um, can I see that profile? So um, if when there's a little lull in the conversation, just share it in the chat and I'm sure um, people will go on and be delighted and fascinated with what they find. Um, so amazing, thank you all so much for your introductions. They were lovely. Um, we're gonna be moving on to some questions now. Um, so uh, I'd, like, I'd love to get 
as many of your ideas as possible. Um, but I, we do have a few questions to, to kind of like jump into. So it would be great to um, kind of keep it concise, keep it clear, keep it punchy, and we'll be able to get through as many questions as possible. And anybody in the chat who has any questions that they'd like to ask, Mariah, Brandy, Randall, and even me, just type it in the chat box and we'll we'll get to it in due, in due course. So um, let's start with, um, with uh, you, Brandy. So what challenges would you say that you faced most when it comes to communicating effectively with the parents of students um, and, and how have you kind of overcome these challenges? Um, like I mentioned, it was just there was a huge disconnect between what we were doing at school and what we needed them to do at home, um, the concepts that we needed parents to reinforce at home. And one of the biggest challenges that I find is especially with my age group, with kindergartners, there are so many things that we just do naturally as adults that when parents go to work with their children at home, they don't remember how to teach these things or they don't know where to go to find resources to use with them. And even though we were providing them through email, like I said, they're still getting lost. And so by creating active newsletters, I was able to go in and share exactly what it was that I wanted parents to be able to have and give them direct instruction on that. Um, I've even created my own videos at times to be able to put on Wakelet. So what I do is I organize according to what we're learning for the week. So I include the standards and the topics that we're learning about. And then I create um, a playlist of YouTube videos, games, you know, anything that directly relates to that. And I will send that link out once a week to my parents because, you know, some subscribe, some don't. That's the beauty of Wakelet. It's just a one click thing. And then they have it at their fingertips. So I'll still send it out once a week for them to have. Um, but that has really cut down on the push and pull that we were getting mm -hmm. from parents. And so everything is kind of streamlined now and they know exactly where to go, when to go, and they know what to do with their kids at home. Mm -hmm. So it's been yeah. a huge. Perfect. And um, Mariah, I know that, um, you know, you, you've been sharing um, these Wakelet newsletters with um, the wider community. And of course, that includes parents as well. Um, I'm assuming that that's a solution to some of the challenges that you face, but for other teachers out there that are facing these challenges in communicating effectively with, with parents, um, how would you kind of overcome that? So I think it all starts with a lot of um, promotion um, and talking about what you're doing. So whether it's um, through your, so we also do still do a monthly newsletter. So but I post that to the Wakelet as well. So, so posting newsletter, talking it up, talking to families and students, promoting it on your social media. Um, I think part of it is just knowing where um, where your folks are, where where your parents, where do they live? Um, if they live on Facebook, using Facebook. So our parent organization, which is amazing and incredible, I'm so so lucky. Um, our amazing parent organization, they run a Facebook page. Um, so even though I don't have Facebook, I can use Facebook through our parent organization. I manage Twitter, Instagram, and Wakelet then, um, which the parents can connect to either through their Facebook page or through our other social media. So um, one of the things that I think has been most helpful, to be very honest, is um, about a year ago, I started an Instagram account and found out that I, I found all the kids. Right. Right. I found I found that all of the middle schoolers live on Instagram. Um, and one of the things though that's been really awesome about that is I now have students who are clicking on our Wakelet page and students who are looking. And I think that um, it, it's it's kind of the whole snowball effect, right? Like once they start talking about it, there's, they're able to say things like, hey, did you see this? Or did you see that? Or did you see what Mrs. Rackley posted? Um, and that's a conversation that they're having both at home and at school. And so I think it, it really all starts with just how you can communicate um, the great things that you're doing. So we post all of those links on our district website and our monthly newsletter um, through Wakelet. We post them on all our social media. And so I think that's just really getting the ball started. Yeah. And, and of course, you, you pointed out to us from the very start that, you know, it's, it's, it's all fair and well to be sharing content about the school on social media, but not all parents use social media. Not all parents are on social media. Right. So quite a lot of the time, a big chunk of the community is missing out on, on what's happening. So, um, you know, 
serious plug here, but of course, Wakelet's been helping you bridge that gap because you don't need a Wakelet account to sign up, uh, to sign in and view the content. It's just right there for, for anybody to see in the community. And it's being able to take that content from Instagram, from Twitter, from Facebook, from all of those sources that you mentioned and create a story out of those in one place so that everybody can see them. So, um, so yeah, that's a, again, a really innovative way of, 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 of using the platform and a really cool way, I guess, of bridging that gap and kind of overcoming that challenge of, of, of getting to the parents and being able to communicate those ideas and those stories with them. Um, Randall, any thoughts on that? I know that you, you, you've obviously worked with a lot of, a lot of teachers and uh, you may have a different perspective to this, but um, how would you overcome those challenges when it comes to um, uh, communicating effectively and building those relationships with parents? Yeah, so the, the key is um, for teachers with the parent relationship is this idea that um, teachers uh, are just teaching the same way that they've taught when the parents were in school, right? So you walk in with this construct of get out your books, get out your pen, get out your paper, uh, pencils, and it's the same way that we were taught, so you should teach it that way as well. And so what Wakela does and the other tools, all the, the other digital tools, um, it really communicates with parents and makes it very clear with teacher clarity. Here's the expectation. This is where we're going. These are the specific tools that we're going to use. And these are the specific outcomes that we're going to uh, uh, reach for. But I think the unique thing about it all is uh, parents start to see the personalized learning that occurs uh, through the use of technology. Uh, so it really opens up that communication. So now uh, the parents can see that this really focuses on uh, my individual student, my kid, uh, rather than just a blanket approach to education and, you know, teach to the middle kind of philosophy. Uh, so it really personalizes it for them. And now teachers have the ability to communicate each individual student's needs uh, quickly and efficiently. And most importantly, instead of the teacher constantly communicating that, now the student becomes self-driven and self-directed. Mm -hmm. and they're taking ownership of their learning and they are sharing their learning with their parents and, and the parents are also having some interaction with the kid. So now the teacher really becomes that true facilitator of learning and just connect the, helping the kids connect the dots as to how they see learning and how it works for them. Right. Um, that's kind of how I've seen it work and how I've seen it play out. And uh, when we move into more one-to-one -one initiatives or more technology into school systems, um, this is kind of how it works when people are using Wakelet. Mm -hmm. and so it becomes really a, a place where kids can tell their own personal story and communicate it well with, uh, uh, with the parent. And now the teacher becomes that true facilitator to find the resources that really amplifies the learning for each kid. Perfect. And, and um, one of the things that I've, I've kind of discovered from speaking with teachers is I was speaking to a teacher who's been a teacher for quite some time, and they said that there's a clear difference in generations, uh, and not the generations of the kids, but the generations of the parents, in how invested and interested they are in their child's education. So some generations of parents are super eager and, and really want to know everything that's going on. Some have a more hands-off approach. Um, do you feel like parents, um, and we'll start with Brandy, I guess, do you feel like parents of, of the students in your class are becoming more involved in, in their children's education. And given how long you've been teaching, do you feel like this has changed over the years? It doesn't have to be your, your personal experience, but you know, perhaps people in, in your community that may have some ideas on that as well. Yeah, um, as a matter of fact, a couple of years ago when I first started at Wilson Prep, um, I had a great group of parents, but there was not a lot of parent engagement. Um, so right. since I started using Wakelet, I've seen an increase in that. Um, and one of the things that I did is I actually created differentiated learning groups. And so in my classroom, I teach in small groups. That's the bulk of what I do. And so those groups are based off of the child's academic needs. So that's how I group them. It's not necessarily the highs versus the lows. It's just what they need at that particular time. And so each kid knows what group they're in. And so I'm able to go in and give recommendations through Wakelet for what they can be working on specifically at home for those 
standards and skills that they need help on. And so parents have really been able to zero in on their child's education and their needs because now they're aware of what they need. Right. So before, you know, we were saying, okay, these are the things we're working on this week. And they really had no clue what we're talking about. So now not only am I sending out the newsletter where I'm telling them what we're doing throughout a whole week span, but I'm also saying, okay, your child specifically is working on this right now. And here's some resources to help you make that happen at home. And so it's, it's been a very big um, help to kind of bridge that gap and pull those things together. Awesome. And, and uh, Mariah, as a principal, obviously you're in the position to um, maybe not, not as be as not have as much direct contact or communication with, um, with parents, but obviously you get that feedback from the teachers that you work with. Um, would you say that the attitude that parents have towards um, understanding more a little bit about their, their, their um, child's um, education, would you say that that's gone up or gone down? How's that kind of trended? That's a great question. So I would say that parents have really appreciated um, what we're what we've been doing on social media, and that includes Wakelet, just giving them some insight. Um, you know, I, I think about it this way: um, we're responsible for um, the most precious thing in the whole wide world to 1,150 sets of parents every single day, and if we can give them a little bit of insight as to how they're spending their day and how they're um, what they're doing with their time with us, um, you know. Sometimes we see our we see kiddos more than their parents do, um, and so I think there's a lot of power in being able to, um, a lot of impact in being able to say, hey, you know what? Let me show you what happened in math class today, um, or let me show you what happened at a special event. So another thing that I use Wakelet for is to curate special events. So sometimes it might be. Um, one of our music ensembles playing in our commons area in the morning, or it might be our mini-thon or our diamond dash. I curate those separately so people have an opportunity to see those as well and just really point out some of those awesome things that happen in our community. So I would definitely say that parent attitudes have been really, really positive. They've, been, they've really enjoyed um, Wakelet and the social media push that we've used the last couple years. Yeah, and I can imagine um, I can imagine parents feeling a bit more energized knowing that you know they have some idea of what's going on in the school community, not necessarily even on a granular level, um, like in Brandy's case, where it's very much what is your child doing, but also in a broader sense, and what's the school community being up to? Um, you know, what are the sporting achievements? Like you mentioned before, what's happening with the recitals and any events that you may have? So, um, yeah, it works really well for that. Yeah, just one other thing that I would add there is that you know I I often tell parents that. Um, Wakelet social media it's it's um, it's basically like their cheat sheet for the dinner table to start right. that conversation like hey I saw this on social media today or hey I saw this on Mrs. Rackley's Wakelet page today what were you guys doing um, so I, I, I try to use it in that way with a real positive spin right gotcha amazing amazing ideas and amazing um, input of course from everybody and um, Randall obviously again from a different perspective um, what would you say has changed in the attitudes of, of parents towards um, their, their, their children's education? Do you feel like they're becoming more into it? Um, are they taking a step back? What, what kind of trends have you seen um, overall in recent years? Yeah, so uh, just working out in communities, uh, working with school districts, uh, this comes up a lot. You know, how do we engage parents? Uh, mm -hmm. that's, that's been the quintessential question, I think, for centuries. How do we engage parents in the learning experience? Um, and from what I found is, uh, so you have parents who are Uber drivers, parents who work uh, the second and third shift. Uh, you have parents who are trying to make ends meet uh, to save for college because that's not getting any cheaper, especially here stateside. Um, so parents have, they're trying to put away as many resources as possible, but this takes away time from that engagement piece. Uh, so what I'm seeing with the technology, something like a Wakelet or a Flipgrid or Remind, uh, any of these uh, tools, um, now you can directly engage parents on their mobile devices mm -hmm. on their time. Uh, so it's not just uh, a shame on you if you don't make it to the parent-teacher conference or if you don't make it out to the recital or if you don't make it out to, we understand that life goes on, there are things happening. You're sacrificing as a parent as much as you can to make uh, things you know, well for your kids. Um, so we don't wanna judge. And I think what happens is the technology is creating this connection for them and kind of putting together the pieces for them uh, on their time. 
Uh, so even at, at 2 a.m. when you're on that break and you're working third shift as a nurse uh, or in a hospital, uh, you can pull out your device. You can go to the wakelet to see exactly what it is that your kid is working on that day. And the great thing about it is uh, you can go in and look at wakelet and you'll see two or three Flipgrid videos uh, that your kid produced. And so now it's like you're in that moment. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what I think the technology does. It, it captures the experience for the broader audience to participate in. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's kind of how I approach it when I talk to folks about parental engagement, uh, how to engage parents more. And it's not just about one location at one time. Right. We have to think about it differently where we use uh, one or two or three levels of technology to engage all the time, anywhere, any place, any space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think you you hit on a really good point there, which is if you take a profile um, like Brandy's or any teacher that's using Wakelet for any form of newsletters, it's like parents may not necessarily, like you mentioned, get the time to consistently check their email and look out for that newsletter, but it's very comforting to know that there's a place online, a little corner of the internet without any noise where they can go and find out everything that's been happening in the classroom or in the community. And very often it's just that that thought, that knowing that that place is there, that makes a big difference. And like you said, it alleviates some of the pressure already. You know, like you were talking, you don't want to judge. Parents have very, very busy lives, obviously, and, you know, everybody does. So I think it's just knowing, knowing not necessarily that, you know, you're going to go check it out every day, but if you need to know what's going on in the school, if you want to know what's going on in the class, that's that's you know it's it's right there, and it's a kind of like a permanent place. It's going to be completely updated constantly. So, um, so yeah, it changes things a lot. I think. Oh, there's some really fascinating answers to the questions there. Um, Again, guys, um, in the chat, I hope that you're enjoying everything. I hope that you're enjoying some of these amazing answers. Um, and any questions that you might have on the particular subject, um, on, on building, um, building that, those bridges and, and kind of bridging that gap between the parent, the teacher, and the student, just let us know and we'll try and get to them um, towards the end of the session. So um, let's move on to the uh, third question. So I remember being in school, right? And um, it seems like a long time <laughs> ago now. It, it didn't a few years ago, but now it does. It's really strange. Um, and I remember that, that the teachers that I really liked and that I really engaged with, they were the ones that took a step to communicate on a very human level. And it was those classes that I paid the most attention to. Um, and it's those classes where I retain most of the information up until my adult life. And I remember the relationships that I had with those teachers because they really went kind of above and beyond to make those little relationships with the students and, and communicate effectively with them. Um, so what, what steps, um, Mariah, do, do you think can be taken by teachers uh, to create a, a more supportive environment that kind of encourages that communication, like what I just mentioned? Wow, well, that's a good one. So, <laughs> so a couple things, uh, a couple things that uh, kind of popped into my head. First, um, we work really hard on our culture here at Cedar Crest Middle School. We talk a lot about being part of a community. We talk a lot about what our responsibility is in being part of a community and how that impacts us. So I think we focus a lot on connecting with our students, connecting with our families, connecting um, with our community, and just having those personal pieces in place because that is so important. And it really is a part of who we are. Um, and so you'll see that in some of our hashtags, like um, we have hashtags that are um, community-based. We have ones that are um, about Falcons Care, which is a community outreach program. Um, and so I think um, I think that's a really um, important part is just making sure that um, that we're making those connections and really driving those those pieces home. Um, but I also think you can do that through Wakelet. You can um, build some of those connections and build some of those interests. So um, getting to know your students, finding out again who they are, where they where they are, just um, and meeting them where they are, and, and kind of connecting with them in that way. So um, I think one of the things that um, I kind of have in my mind um, as just an example, uh, we had a snow day um, maybe back in January. And I just threw out a wakelet on social media, uh, threw out a collection on social media and said, hey, I miss you guys today. What are you guys doing? Um, what are you doing on your snow day? And so we had some teachers post and we had some kids post. And for the first time doing it ever without having um, really planned to do it and had to make any grand announcements that that's what I was going to do, I thought it was really neat to see, you know, a handful of people just get on there and start 
start that conversation about what they were doing. So some of our students were practicing for drama club. Some of our students were playing in the snow. Some of our teachers were, um, you know, sent pictures of shoveling their driveways. So I thought it was just a neat opportunity to connect with each other as a community. And we used Wakelet as the forum to do that. Awesome. Um, and Brandy, any thoughts on that? So um, any thoughts on um, how, how, I know that you obviously work with kindergarten children. So making that communication can, can be a little bit more challenging building those relationships with them being so young, but I'm sure that it's, it's still there as, as, as you probably know. Um, how important do you think it is when it comes to building those, those individual relationships with the, the, the students in your class? And how would you say that, that effectively improves that, that relationship long term, even, even across right down to the parent? Um, well, one of the things that I like to do is I like to document their learning as it's happening. So what I'll do is, you know, sometimes we'll do some kind of like project based learning or just a random assignment within the classroom. And I'll walk around and snap pictures or a little video or something, and then I'll upload it to Wakelet and add it into our newsletter. Mm -hmm. So that then each scholar feels like they are playing a vital role in our classroom community. And then, you know, when I'm sharing that with the public and their parents and the rest of the school, they're able to say, oh, hey, I saw that you did this in your classroom. And, you know, it could be a third grader talking to a kindergartner or, you know, just out in that community there bringing it all together and able to have those conversations. Um, recently, I did a Flipgrid um, end of the year celebration. And so I sent out a link uh, through Wakelet for all of my parents to create a video for their kindergartners who were leaving going to first grade, just to kind of give them some last minute well wishes and tell them how proud they are. And um, so that worked out really well because at our end of year celebration, I was able to present 25 students with 25 videos from their parents who were all really involved in their education this year to tell them how proud of them they were. Mm -hmm. So just having that link between Flipgrid, um, Screencastify and Wakelet, you know, that's all been really helpful. Um, and another thing that we're doing to try to kind of align things because we're a K-12 school. So we're, we're our own district. We are a huge school. Mm -hmm. So um, we are getting ready to across the board, kindergarten through 12th grade, each teacher or grade level will have a Wakelet profile where they're going to kind of target some of these same things. And then we can kind of keep track of each other. Mm -hmm. And, you know, kindergarten and 12th grade doesn't always get to see each other, but it would be nice to say, you know, hey, I saw that you guys were working on this project. Like, how did it go? Tell me about it. You know, things like that. And so um, we're just trying to make a lot of big moves to pull it all together. <laughs> right, gotcha. And, and uh, there's so many amazing ideas, I think, when it comes to, um, you know, building, like I said, building those relationships with the individual students and, um, and improving that communication. Um, when it comes to like, it, my next question that I have here is, can you share any great communication stories that you've experienced over the years, right? So f for me, I guess I'll kick it off, but mine, mine is a little bit dramatic and it obviously didn't happen just, just to me. So I'm not saying it's a tough act to follow, but um, I saw this in a television uh, program, which was uh, in the UK. Um, I think it was around two years ago now, and, and there was a sequence from this television program that went viral. And basically the premise of the television, television uh, program, I think it was called Educating Essex or something like that. And um, there was a student uh, in an English class, and this was in, in, in high school, and the student had a very severe stammer, okay? So when it came to any form of public speaking, it's, it's real life, by the way. It's like a fly on the wall uh, documentary where, you know, these real life events are kind of uh, recorded and, and looked at and the teachers and the students talk about them as the talking heads. And um, this student um, had a very severe stammer. So every time that they, they tried to speak in public, they, they just couldn't get it out. It was very debilitating. And um, his English teacher, um, really took a shine to the student and, and decided that they wanted to make a bit of a difference because they had a, 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 a um, an oral presentation that was coming out that was gonna go towards their final year grades, their GCSE, so the pressure was really on. And um, he was inspired, the teacher was inspired by this film called The King's Speech with um, Colin Firth. It's a very British film. Check it out, it's really good actually. I think it won a couple of Oscars, I'm not sure, but it's really good. And in this um, film, um, uh, the, the king at the time uh, had a stammer and um, the, 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 the guy who was looking after him said that if he listened to music uh, at the same time as trying to speak, then he would overcome his, his stammer. And there's this amazing scene in the television program where the teacher 
keeps um, the, the boy after, after class and says, um, try speaking, try, try reading this, this uh, poem out. It was a World War poem. And I'm going to put headphones over you and, and I'm going to play some music. And he put the headphones in and he started to, to speak and his stammer just vanished. And it was, it was a real kind of goosebump moment, right? It was amazing television. And without, I, I, I remember thinking that without the, that one teacher taking the steps to make that, build that relationship and go that extra step with the, uh, that particular student, he wouldn't have been able to overcome that. And it obviously follows him. I think somebody shared the link to the video. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. I'm sure that that's way better than me trying to explain it, but uh, it's pretty powerful. Um, do any of you, um, and just jump in, do any of you have any kind of stories, um, good communication stories? Uh, they can be stories that you've heard like, like me or they, they, they can be yourselves. Shall we start with Randall? <laughs> I can see you're, you're waiting to speak. <laughs> no, I was, I was just wondering who's going to jump in. <laughs> Everybody don't jump in all at once, right? Right, right. Yeah. It's a tough question to be fair because you're kind of thinking, thinking off the fly. But um, if, yeah. if anyone has any, any Yeah, so, so one, one that I have um, when I was teaching, uh, and I think usually people ask me, hey, how did you get to this point in your career, right? So. What did you do to get here? Because everybody thinks it's just an easy road. You kind of stopped teaching, you started doing this. Uh, but actually, there's a lot that kind of built to this point to get to Wakelet. Um, all the things in your head and the reiterations and stuff that you kind of did in your past life. Uh, so when I was teaching, uh, one of the things that we did was, and this was, I'm going to go back to 1999, okay? Wow. Uh, yeah, there we go. There we go. So, <laughs> Uh, one of the things I did was I, I told the kids, I said, hey, I'm the social studies teacher, seventh grade. Uh, one of the things we're going to learn uh, in this unit is the preamble and the U.S. Constitution. So let's start out with the preamble first and kind of have this conversation about what the preamble is. Uh, so I just gave them the preamble. This is what it is. Now I want you to put it into your own words. Keep the same words. You present it into a manner that works for you. And I just thought, you know, some kids will read it whatever. So slowly kids started staying on a recess and I'm wondering what they're doing. They're not going out for recess. They're eating their lunches and stuff. And the day that it was time for them to present, uh, they had this humongous presentation. They created their own USA shirts. Uh, they had dance moves that went with it. And then the kid that couldn't dance was the DJ. And the kid that couldn't do the DJing stuff wasn't quite sure. That kid was in charge of the lights and the props and all that kind of stuff. So it really empowered everybody to communicate, hey, here are my strengths. This is what I'm good at. Uh, I might not be the, the greatest orator out there to actually sing the song or whatever it is, but I have a role to play. Mm -hmm. And I'll understand the preamble just as much as everybody, as everybody else, but from a different vantage point. Uh, so now you have producers, directors, actors, uh, stage hands, all the cool stuff uh, that was way outside of my wheelhouse. I had no clue the kids could do that kind of stuff. I just put the challenge down and say, I communicated, do this. And they communicated back to me that said, um, these are our strengths. And this is how we want to communicate information to you. Uh, so that's really, really cool. And this is before um, digital film and this kind of stuff, right? So I had the digital eight camera right. running and it was like kind of grainy, but it was like digital eight. So you had to buy the little tape. Uh, so I was recording and then we'll watch it afterwards. And the funny thing is I was able to convert it into digital. And a lot of those kids are now like grown adults and they have their <laughs> own kids. And so they're like friends with me on, on Facebook. And so one day I just, I was like, I got this video. I'm going to upload it on Facebook. And they were just like, oh, my gosh, this thing is like 20 years old. <laughs> we haven't seen it in forever. Look at us. You know, right. But it, it just kind of inspires. And the communication wasn't so much about me as it, was, as it was about lending voice to them. And just that experience in itself gives me more context as to how a tool like Flipgrid works, mm. the potential of a Flipgrid. It gives me more context as to how Remind is a great communication tool. So it provides me with more context about Wakelet, how to leverage Wakelet um, to ask the right question 
and to empower people. It's not to use Wakelet as a, a digital folder or digital portfolio just mm-hmm. to store uh, uh, worksheets, but to actually empower kids and empower families and empower communities uh, to create this very, very cool culture uh, to where our true beliefs becomes our values mm. and our values turns around and really, really, really drive our behaviors. Mm. Uh, so that's in a, in a, in a long, long-term way, that's kind of how I see the communication working with technology. Amazing. Yeah. And, and I think that, that that kind of coincides with something that I read recently as well, um, where I, I was I was kind of doing um, a little bit of deep diving into, into communication methods that teachers have employed with their students. And they found one of the, the best ways is to not necessarily have that kind of linear structure type um Kind of forceful system that 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 kind of has is is quite old fashioned now. I know that a lot of a lot of schools don't have that, and a lot of teachers don't employ those. But they found that by having those, it kind of just teaches the kids to fall into place and just kind of not necessarily think for themselves. But when you open that up and, like you said, give them choices and and kind of challenge them and say that you know this is instead of instead of kind of saying um, you know here's an outline of a parrot like kind of color it in you just give them the blank piece of paper and kind of say do what you want and it can be a little bit chaotic as I can imagine well I can't imagine I'm sure you guys can imagine um but apparently it does help to kind of give them that freedom to have that 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 level of communication um Brandy or Mariah whoever kind of jumps in first does anyone have a story that can top that I don't, okay. I don't think that I'm going to have a story to top that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough competition. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll 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 take that then and we'll move it on to the next question because it fits in quite well. Um, Randall, you mentioned you know you, it, it was you doing a particular activity that helped open up that that level of communication. Um, so, Brandy, what type of activities that you can do in the class, whether these activities have you know a tech side of them, whether it's just things that you can do with the pen and the pencil. Um, what types of activities have you done that you think can open up that, that, that level of communication between you and the student? Um, like I mentioned before, we do a lot of like project-based assignments, um, different things like that. Uh, one of the things that I want to do co- going forward, I did not really have the time this year because there were a lot of things that I was trying to push into place this year, not just for me, but for other classrooms as well. But going forward, what I want to do is do like book reviews And even kindergartners can do things like this. Um, So in their small group, they'll read a book and then they will have their Flipgrid open to where they can answer the questions and kind of have that communication. And so then we will present those through Wakelet Mm -hmm. um, within the classroom. And so we might do that once a week where we present them and then they will be ready to go home to the parents. So then the parents are getting to see their kids, you know, and it's not just a still picture. It's not just, oh, here's cute little Johnny that I took a picture of while he's reading. This is like, oh, my kid read this book and this is his depth of knowledge that Mm. he has on it. So that is my next biggest endeavor that I'm going for this year as far as using Wakelet in the classroom. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to jump in real quick because Brandy's being a little coy. Uh, <laughs> as always <laughs> as always right as always so one of the cool things that i saw brandy do um was uh, at the end of the school year like she said it's a k-12 building so at the end of the school year um we had graduation first graduation and so she set up a uh a wakelet code for parents so we pass them out at the graduation so parents can just scan it and give shout outs to their graduate or their friends or their kids uh, at the graduation. Uh, So they created these uh, cool Wakelet shout out videos and we set them at two minutes that way, you know, you don't see mom crying too long. Uh, (laughs) So, and so she set those up and then the cool part, the faculty uh, was taking pictures like every other faculty with devices. They're taking pictures and posted the pictures inside of Wakelet and she mashed together the pictures from Wakelet and the videos from Flipgrid. And it kind of created this story from everybody's different voice and everybody's different angles. And Mm -hmm. now the the graduates who had their back turned to the audience can't see all of this stuff. So once graduation's over, they saw it and they start bawling, right? So (laughs) 
Brandy has a lot more under her sleeve than what she's leading on to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with that one, we had what 40, 40 graduates, 42 graduates, something like that. Yeah, 45. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, 45. And then um, over 100 contributions to that collection. Wow. So that was fun. I can't wait to see how that grows in years to come. It's such an incredible way to engage everybody, isn't it? Like, that's, that's such a neat idea. Um, I, I wanted to pause just for a moment and try and get the audience involved. So this is the first time that I've done this. So what I've done is I've created a, um, a poll. And I would like to start this. And then what we can do is, can everybody see this? Can everyone see a screen? Just let me know in the, okay, perfect. So I would like everybody um, to vote for what they think is the best way to improve the student teacher parent relationship. Um, so we've got more technology as an option. We've got better communication. We have better teaching strategies. We've got teacher attitude and we have school community. So right now, I don't know if anyone, I think maybe only I can see the results. Can the, can my fellow speakers see the results on the screen right now or not? Okay, so only I can see them. That's that's awesome. That's exactly how I wanted it, so I can do the big reveal. Um, so I thought I'd do this just to kind of get the opinions of um, the opinions of the, uh, the 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 audience on what they believe is the best way to improve the student teacher parent relationship. So I'm going to end the voting in five, four, three, two, and one, and I'm going to click share the results, and hopefully everybody should see that. So it looks like the winner is better communication. Um, I kind of thought that it would be that as well, to be honest with you. Um, guys, do you have any, um, any thoughts on the results of this particular survey? Should we start with Mariah? Sure. Um, yeah, I, that doesn't surprise me at all. It really doesn't. I think that communication is really key, and we talk about it all the time in schools, whether it's communicating with students or communicating with families or um, administrators communicating with teachers. I just think communication is really key. Um, I think it opens a lot of avenues. I think it builds your culture. I think it builds trust. I think it builds um, just that sense of, of kind of being in it together and being part of a community. So uh, communication does not surprise me at all as, as your number one choice there on your poll. Mm -hmm. Randall, any thoughts on the, uh, on the poll? Sorry, I had to unmute it because the box got a little smaller there. Sorry gotcha. about that. Yeah, yeah. No, so this is this is perfect. So the communication piece is, is is key, right? So better communication. And then I think I'm gonna push a little bit on that question. Then it's, you know, what what is better communication? Mm -hmm. What does better communication look like, sound like, feel like? And then is the better communication between the adults in the building? Uh, is the better communication between the admin and the adults? or is the better communication between the kids, the kids. So we kind of have to, you know, dice it up a little bit to figure out what better communication means. And I don't think there's one answer. I think every community is going to be different. Every school is going to be different. Uh, every grade level and every classroom, the communication is going to be totally different. So uh, for us just to, as a school, I would, I would be, you know, kind of hesitant to say, use this one approach to communication and throw the blanket statement on it. Mm. Uh, so one of the things that we do to enhance communication at, at one of my uh, sites, one of the school districts I work with is uh, through the use of, of Wakelet, uh, we also have a thing called PLCs, Professional Learning Communities, or PLNs, uh, Professional Learning Networks, or DPLNs, which is what I created, Digital Professional Learning Networks. Uh, so through the use of Wakelet, uh, every time I add an item, into my Wakelet or create a Wakelet collection, the people who are following me, which are probably my colleagues, the people on my team or students, there's an instant notification on their phone, uh, which mm. is awesome. So now you get this ding on your phone that uh, Brandy created this cool collection and I can open it immediately and take a look at it and have clear understanding what Brandy is trying to do or communicating. Even if I do not have enough time to go next door to Brandy uh, to her class to see it in action. I at mm -hmm. least have the digital components that kind of drive me and inspire me. Mm -hmm. um, so that for some buildings, that might be the best way to communicate uh, based on time constraints uh, because we can't have vertical and horizontal uh, common planning time all the time. 
All right. Because if that's the case, you, your financials and the budgets and all the other stuff that happens, as, as Mariah knows, uh, become strained. Um, so trying to get coverage for all those people. Uh, so I think the technology really helps out with that. Mm -hmm. uh, so we just have to figure out what does better communication mean? And you have to unpack that at your own local level in your classroom and with your uh, schools. And we have um, uh, Rhett Oldham who said that um, he calls every parent um, around 120 in the first month of school and wow. says something nice about their child and provides them with the expectations of my class. That's Rhett on the chat. Um, that I love two that. thumbs up, man. That's two thumbs up right, right here. Yeah. I love that. That's like a combination of good communication and also a really good attitude as well, a really good teacher attitude. Um, Brandy, do you have any, any thoughts on... Um, Good communication being the the, the kind of highest um, highest poll answer to that survey. Yeah, um, nothing is going to function properly if the communication is not there. I mm -hmm. mean, that's just what it all boils down to. Um, and in any school, the vertical alignment piece is going to be essential. But when you have a school as large as ours, where we're going from kindergarten all the way to twelfth grade. Um, that is really important because mm -hmm. our students are staying with us forever. So if we find out that in middle school they're struggling with um, reading stamina or vocabulary uses and functions and things like that, then we know, hey, early on, this is something that we need to be targeting. Well, if everybody is using Wakelet, um, just like Dr. Sampson said, as soon as one of my colleagues posts something new, I'm able to automatically see what it is. Um, I'll get that notification. I can click on it and say, okay, so this is something that they're focusing on this week. So if they're hitting this a lot, then that tells me that I need to be hitting this as well. That mm -hmm. way they don't have to hit it as hard and spend that much time on it when they get older. So um, I think just that communication and being able to, even when we, like he said, when we don't have the time to go sit down with one another, we still kind of have a way to see into their lives, see what mm -hmm. it is that they're doing. That we, way we can kind of help them with that on the front end mm -hmm. instead of having to catch up on the back end. So I think it's just a great way to kind of keep us all together and meshed and cohesive and one big happy family. <laughs> Amazing. Um, okay, so we're going to move on to um, some questions from the audience. Okay, so anybody in the chat who has any questions on, um, if they'd like to get any ideas on how to improve that uh, that relationship, that communication uh, between parent, uh, teacher, and student, uh, just let us know in the box, and I'll be able to get to them as soon as I can. Um, but we have got one question from Twitter that I'd love to speak with Mariah about in particular. Um, how can you communicate effectively? with technophobe parents, right? So parents who aren't that up to date on the technology or maybe a little bit wary about it or just, you know, don't know what it is. Uh, that's an awesome question. So um, a couple things that we do here at the middle school, um, we, um, we still send a newsletter and the newsletter goes home to all parents through our um, student information system. So anyone who has an account in our student information system has access to our newsletter. So that's one way, um, because even though that's technology, it's, it's a little different when it's an email. It's not social media. It's not um, kind of the big, scary um, internet. Um, but, I, but I also think that it's really rooted in the communication piece and providing that education to folks. So I talk about, um, I talk about uh, Wakelet. I talk about all of our social media. Um, at open house, we talk about it at parent teacher conferences, we talk about it face to face, um, we talk about it at all our parent school partners meetings, um, which is our awesome parent organization. So I think just making it part of the conversation and being willing to answer the questions. So you can't promote something and then um, be defensive about it or be absolute about it. You have to be willing to, to kind of stand in there and take the questions and, and have the conversation because it's a good conversation. There are, there are really scary things that happen on the internet, on social media, and we all know that as educators. Um, but I think, you know, you, you can have those conversations. And I, so I think it's, it's educating the parents, but it's also educating the students. Um, because we work in a middle school, because our students are a little bit older, we start to have those conversations about what is good digital citizenship? What does it mean to be part of a community? What are some of those things that you have to do um, in order to be a responsible part of, of what we do at Cedar Rest Middle School? And we talk about the expectations and what it means to be a Falcon. Um, and I think all of that plays all of that plays into having those conversations with the parents.
And we have another idea. Okay, you can all hear me now. You know, the funny thing is, before this started, I was like, hey guys, remember to unmute your, uh, your microphones. <laughs> well, I'm guilty as charged. Um, we have another uh, awesome idea here from Brett, again, who said that students can create videos uh, for parent-teacher conferences that explain their grades and how they can do better in the future. And then you can put those on Wake Club. That's a really neat idea um, because it not only introduces uh, the parents to the technology that the kids are using, I guess in this case, it would be like a Flipgrid video. Um, it also allows the, the students to, again, effectively communicate with the parents a little bit better because maybe that face-to-face -face contact may be a little bit strained or they might not feel that comfortable. So being able to do it over video, um, that's a really, really cool idea. Um, Brandy, um, how, how do you think, I know that you, you've, You've obviously dealt with this before. Um, how do you think that you can effectively communicate well with, with Technophobe parents? Um, one of the things is just letting them know that it does not have to be as scary as what they think it is. So I have offered my door and desk to multiple parents this year, just saying, hey, come on in and I'll sit down with you and I'll show you exactly what it is. And as soon as I show them that they're a couple clicks away from all of this amazing content, they're just kind of taken aback and relieved because it's it's not this big scary thing that they think it should be. And what I'm starting to see in our neck of the woods is um, we have a lot of older parents mm -hmm. that have younger kids. And so, you know, by the time they get to me, these parents are like, whoa, I never had to do any of this. I don't want to do it. And so I show them at our open house and at the beginning of the school year, like it really is super simple. You can do it from your phone. You can do it from your computer. You know, just I just try my best to reassure them. And that's kind of my job as a kindergarten teacher anyway, because kindergarten's their child's first year of school. Mm -hmm. And that's scary in the first place. So our kindergarten team kind of has taken it upon ourselves to introduce all the things to the parents. And so technology is one of those things. And so we are a blended learning academy. So it is part of our culture and our expectation that people are going to use technology. Mm -hmm. And so we just kind of, you know, let that be known from the very beginning of the school year. You know, this is something that we're going to do. And, you know, when your child reaches third grade, they're going to get their own Chromebook. So I, we kind of need to work together as a team to make sure that when they get there, you can kind of help them navigate through some of these questions and mm -hmm. problems that they may have. And so we just try to sit down and keep our doors open and allow parents to come in and just walk them through anything that they might need help with when it comes to technology. Amazing. And and, and um, we've just got a really cool quote there from Tracy Sangster where uh, technophobia is not about age, just attitude. I really, really like that. And that's so true. Um, you know, I, I have calls with educators daily and it really has nothing to do with, with, with age. It's down to the attitude of the teacher. There can be some teachers who are, you know, relatively young and, you know, who aren't that clued up on technology or aren't that engaged. And there can be teachers who, you know, are, are of an, an older age who um, really take it upon themselves to be like, hey, you know, I can, I can hang with this as well and um, learn that technology and, and take the, the kind of wisdom that they've got throughout their, their careers and you use that, combine that with technology to achieve some really, really awesome results. Um, Randall, what, what advice I'd like to, to, we'll have one more question from the audience and then I would like to move on uh, to the conclusion. So um, Randall, this is another one from our audience. What advice would you give a new teacher uh, who has just entered the profession? And it doesn't necessarily, I'm just gonna add this, it doesn't necessarily have to be advice about the parent teacher student relationship, but just any kind of advice that you've, that, that you'd like to give. Yeah. So my, my big thing is that, uh, that I give folks, my, my number one thing that I always tell folks is, uh, culture will eat strategy for breakfast. So you have to develop a very, very strong culture with your kids. Uh, make sure that you connect with your kids, uh, connect with the parents, um, and then create that culture of learning. Um, so typically we, we get kind of confused with, okay, we have this culture where everybody's buddy, buddy in there. We're all happy. We're excited and no learning is happening. Right. Right. I, I don't want to upset the kids and give them too much work or challenge them too hard. Uh, Cause I want them to like me. Right. Uh, so the culture is not about somebody liking you. The culture is about 
you having a certain belief system and having certain behaviors that will drive a value. Mm -hmm. So we wanna make sure that everything that we do in the classroom uh, has the tray effect is what I call it. The tray effect from hoops, basketball, right? <laughs> so, so the tray effect is transfer. Uh, so what am I doing in my classroom that I understand conceptually as the adult that can transfer directly to the kid? Because if it doesn't transfer from me to the kid, why are we doing it? Mm -hmm. And then the second part is what, what are the results that we're seeking? Let's be very, very clear about the results that we want. Are there specific items or outcomes that we're looking for at the end? So have the end in mind with the results. And then the third part where you're using technology like a, a Wakelet or a, a Remind or a Flipgrid or any of these great tools that are out there, um, what's the evidence that we're gonna collect that learning is actually happening? Uh, and the learning does not necessarily have to happen the way I prescribe it as the teacher. Mm -hmm. It's about the outcome of learning that the kid has uh, put out there. So anytime that uh, you get a little frustrated as a new teacher walking in uh, and the kids are all over the place, probably the best thing to do is just, okay, let's refocus. <laughs> Come on kids, we can do it. Let's refocus and they'll look at you like, what are you talking about? But in your head, you're resetting yourself. Uh, so what's the transfer we want? What are the results? and what's the evidence that we seek uh, in our culture. Uh, so the culture is the number one thing, and uh, we're heading out to the Achievement Gap Initiative at Harvard uh, coming up here at the end of the month. Um, and one of the key things that uh, they found out was with kids, when they say, my teacher challenges me, that means that the teacher really cares. Mm -hmm. It's not that the teacher brings in donuts, it's not the teacher lets me eat lunch with them, it's not you know, all the other stuff is that the teacher challenges me to be better than what I'm currently doing. So my teacher really cares about me. That is what kids are saying caring is. So mm -hmm. that's my advice for new teachers coming in. Caring is about challenging and pushing uh, the kids to be better than what they were when they came into you, but also being wide open to have some clear um, uh, flexibility for the kids for voice and choice. Mm -hmm. Powerful stuff. That's really, really profound. I, can we get that, um, that, that quote one more time, that mantra? Because I want to make sure that I commit it to memory. What, the tray? The, the tray, no, that's going to be the thumbnail to this video on YouTube. Okay. But the actual mantra, the, um, the uh, culture, eats, oh, culture eats strategy for breakfast. Culture eats strategy for breakfast. That's awesome. Yes, Mr. Drucker said that one. Culture yeah. eats strategy for breakfast. No, I, I really love that. That's incredible. Absolutely. Um, Mariah, moving on to you, um, just to just to conclude, what advice would you give to a new teacher that has just entered the profession from any perspective that you'd like? That's um, that's an awesome question. So um, I would I would really piggyback probably off what Randall said and talk about how um, how important it is, how important culture is. But I would I would maybe take it a step further and talk about connecting with our students. Um, and it's not about being friends with them, but it's about knowing where they come from, what motivates them, um, and, and really what makes them tick. Because we all know that everyone has um, has a different set of needs and a different set of worries that they come to school with every day. And I think that that drives what, what we're able to do. So if we have students who are worried about um, where they're gonna put their head at night, they have a different set of needs than students who um, who are worried about, you know, athletic practice or something different in the evening. And so I think just knowing your students is so important. You can't, I don't think you can, un, I don't think you can underestimate the importance of connecting with your students. Right. And then to, to come back to the culture piece, I think you have to learn um, to be part of the culture in which you work. Um, so here, um, I, I, one of the things that we talk about all the time is, is how to be part of our community, how to be part of our Falcon family. Um, and, and we're looking for people who are invested in our culture and who want to be here and who want to connect with our students and who, who want to be part of our mission and our vision. Um, and so be open-minded to those things and, and really have a positive growth mindset that, um, you know, that you're not a first-year teacher or a new teacher or a young teacher who knows everything, mm. um, but that you're really open to learning new things and growing with your community because I think those are all keys to success. Yeah, so it's like a combination of humility, of knowing that, you know, it's okay to learn from other teachers. You don't have to come into the profession, you know, knowing exactly what's going to happen every single time. Um, and also that that willingness to learn and that 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 passion as well. 
Um, awesome. And uh, and Brandy, what about you to to, to see as What 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 piece of information or advice would you give to a young a young teacher, a new teacher that's that's kind of just entered the profession or thinking about entering the profession? Um, I would say for one, just take it all in stride. Um, <clears throat> you're not going to learn everything all at one time. And so I hear a lot of young people who are going through school that want to be a teacher, they're just so overwhelmed right now because they're being forced in their degree to learn lots of things, but they don't understand how they're going to apply all of these things as soon as they get into the classroom. And so the simple answer is you're not, you're not going to apply every single one of these things that you're learning. As soon as you walk through the door, you have to learn along with your students. So the biggest piece is don't just like Mariah said, don't expect them to fit a mold. Mm -hmm. Students are not all going to be the same. Um, we are in a society now where we're seeing a lot more children with special needs coming into the classrooms. They're being included. Um, my daughter, for one, is one of those. She has Down syndrome, but I have her fully included. So you need to be prepared to um, work with those students and understand how to work th with those students. Keep an open mind so that you can effectively listen to your colleagues, effectively listen to all of the learning partners that are there. Um, don't come in with this mindset of, oh, I didn't learn how to do that in school, so I'm not going to attempt it. Mm -hmm. Because that is going to be the biggest thing that's going to knock you down is as soon as you say, I can't or I won't. Those are going to be your killing factors. So mm -hmm. keep an open mind as far as, any of those challenges when they come up. So I think that's just the biggest thing. Um, and then back to culture, when you're going into a school, definitely take time to observe and learn the culture. Um, we don't want you to come into our school and fit a mold either. We want you to come in with your own personality, mm -hmm. but we also want you to come in being willing to grow with us. So, you know, as long as you come in and you have an open mind and you are willing to, make changes or learn something new, try a new platform, try a new curriculum. Um, you know, those are all things that are going to benefit your students in the long run. And ultimately that's what this is about. Amazing. Guys, thank you so much for, for all of your answers and for, for joining us today. We've gone over time by like 12 minutes, but it hasn't, it hasn't felt like that. It feels like it's been way less than an hour and 12 minutes, right? Um, but I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for taking your time out to, to come and speak with everybody today. And thank you so much to um, everybody in the audience for taking the time out to, um, to join us. Um, as Randall said in your, in your Twitter video, you know, you could be anywhere and you're here with us. It's the summer holidays. You could be doing much, much more enjoyable, pleasurable, fun things than this. So it's amazing that you've attended to, to, um, to hear, you know, these educators speak and talk about, um, talk about a really important issue. So um, again, like I said at the beginning, this is going to be the first in a series of webinars that we're going to be doing. And based on how amazing this has gone and based on how, how many people have attended, we'll definitely be doing this again soon. So if you guys have any suggestions on what types of topics you, you, you would like to see us cover in the next few webinars, uh, just let us know. Hit us up on Twitter and um, we'll definitely consider it. Um, also, um, we, Wakelet, are going to be at ISTE um, in Philadelphia in... Uh, it's like next week now, is it, Randall? Yeah, next week on the 20th, yep. 20th, yeah, coming yeah, up. on the 22nd. Yeah, coming up next week. Yeah, so if anybody's at ISTE, um, come hang out with the Wakelet crew, uh, ask us any questions. Um, we'd love to get some pictures with you. You've got some awesome, awesome things lined up for ISTE and we're making a really, really big announcement. So we'll keep it in the download for now, but it's massive, it's gonna change the game. Yes, a hundred percent. A hundred percent. Don't worry, don't worry. You'll get a sneak preview. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so we have Sarah who said um, she'd love to see uh, more of a how-to webinar. I think that that's that's a great idea. I think that there's um, a lot of different things about Wakefoot and different areas of the site that um, are really really useful. But unless you discovered them or, or seen other teachers using them, you could miss them. So um, I think that that's a really good idea for the next few webinars, perhaps finding out a little bit more about how teachers are actually using it practically in their classrooms for themselves, because the use cases are endless. And, and um, on that note, 
it's such a privilege for us as a company to be part of the educator community because the ideas and the feedback that we get from, from teachers online, um, it, it, it makes us what we are and we couldn't do it without you and we're trying to make the most useful product possible um, for educators so we, we simply can't do it without the feedback and the ideas that you have. Such a passionate, amazing, engaged community to be a part of and I'm really, really proud. Um, so thank you very much guys, that's it for now. Um, we'll catch up with, uh, with everybody later on on social media um, and we'll also send, an, uh, send a few emails out to everybody that's joined as well with a little bit of follow-up information, some of the examples that we might have, gone, uh, might have spoken about today. So thank you all so much. It's a shame to end it, but we're gonna have to. Um, we'll see you all next time. Thank you so much, everybody. Awesome. Thanks everyone.